Hello everyone, Golden Nova here. So, yeah, if you aren't in the know, I've been doing YouTube full-time for about a month now, which is kinda wild to be honest. I've been working towards this for a very, very long time, and I'm so lucky to have found a community that finds what I do helpful and entertaining. So, in honor of being fully immersed in the Yugi tubing sphere, I wanted to do a new Q&A. But, because this is my job now, I wanted to take a little time to talk about ways that you can show any extra support, if you have the means. If you've already heard or want to skip all that, I've got a time code posted here, and there should be chapters you can skip to, so you can get right to the juicy stuff. For everyone else, I wanted to reiterate that even if you're unable to help in ways I'm about to talk about, that's still amazing. I don't get to do what I do without an audience, so even just watching my videos is beyond helpful, and for those of you who do the liking and the subscribing and the commenting, even more so. I know I ask these in like every video, which is why I feel it's equally important to let you all know that I'm still grateful for you just being around. So from the bottom of my heart, thank you. Now, some of you will have noticed that I recently moved to releasing a video every weekday. Without the 9 to 5 grind, I've been able to put more time into making videos, releasing full explained episodes every Monday and Friday, a kind of free space every Tuesday and Thursday, and progression polls every Wednesday. And not only are these heckin' fun to make, it's also a way to help pad out my ad revenue. I'm not gonna lie, I did take a significant pay cut to do this, and while I'd take doing this over dealing with office politics any day of the week, I do have to keep a roof over my head and food on the table. The idea is that more videos means I can work my way up to what I was making beforehand, but analytics are showing that anything that's not an explained video, even most of the lore ones, don't really do all that well. Now, hopefully, with the increased amount of videos going up, the algorithm will help bolster the channel, but all of that is based on the whims of an unknowable machine intelligence. So even if it does help soon, there's no guarantee it's going to, or will keep doing so. And that's where you come in. By backing me financially, you're not only helping to guarantee my stability, but you're also getting a little extra Nova for your buck. For those of you who want to send a couple bucks my way every month, I'd highly encourage you to check out my YouTube membership. It's only $1.99 a month, and it gives you access to some sweet Novaverse-themed emojis that you can use in the comments or during streams. It also gives you access to my monthly schedule. I usually figure out all the videos I'm going to make at the start of the month so I know what to focus on, so you'll be in the know about what I do all the the time. And while YouTube doesn't currently have the functionality for me to gift memberships to patrons, which means no emojis at higher tiers, every tier does get that monthly update. And if YouTube ever gets the function to gift memberships, you bet your bottom dollar I'm gonna tack that onto it as well. Over on Patreon, at the $5 tier, you can get early access to all my videos. That's right, the first draft cuts of each video I make goes up early. And I've been doing a pretty good job at keeping to that schedule. They're also ad-free, so if you don't want to worry about those, you can get the whole uninterrupted viewing experience. You also get access to the scripts for those videos, as well as any deck I build in Edo Pro based off of those episodes. Those are all posted in the patron-only section of my Discord, where you can not only hang out with me, but also suggest archetypes for the monthly patron-voted video. And for the $10 tier, you get everything from the $5 tier, and you have access to vote for that monthly video. Four archetypes are up to the vote each month, and you get to help decide which one I make. And like I said, that also comes with early, ad-free access to videos, my scripts and deck lists, and my monthly schedule. There's also a $50 tier where you can just pick an archetype for me to cover each month, you know, as long as it's not some 60-card sized abomination like Utopia. And it's got all the previous Patreon tier perks, but there's only one slot available at any given time, so if you're interested, make sure to keep an eye out for it because when the vacancy opens up, it's not open for long. There's also a few milestones I'm looking to meet. If I can get 100 patrons, then A, I'm pretty sure I'd be set for the foreseeable future, and B, I believe I've already promised to finish the rest of the Five Nights at Freddy's 1 level, so if you want to see me quake in terror, well, you can see what I've already done here, but if you want to see the rest, you know what to do. If I get to 200 patrons, I'll work on another big archetype, kind of like my subscriber goals, and for this one, I've got my eyes set on... DD, Dimension Demon, Double D, um, uh, bonus incentive, you can all vote on how I pronounce that for the whole video. And if we can get to 300 patrons, a truly Herculean task, I'll feel secure enough to set aside a few weeks to cover Yuya Explained. That means Odd Eyes, that means Performa Pals, that means Pendulum Magicians. And that's all the updates I have on that front for you. Once again, I do not value you any less as a member of my audience if you aren't able to do this. I ask only because we live in a system where I have to make sure I get enough money every month to stay housed and fed. And what I'm doing now, 
doesn't guarantee a living wage. With that out of the way, let's answer some questions. Zodiac Scream Scream asked, uh, looks like three questions. Uh, one, what archetype do you think needs to have more cards or lore added onto them? Uh, I'm definitely here for more, um, Draco Slayer lore. Uh, to my knowledge, we still don't know how Zephyr Metaltron exists, and those are from two very clearly different universes, and I, I need, I need answers. I can't live without these answers. Please, Konami. Number two, if you had to be an anime character for the Yu-Gi-Oh! anime, what would be your deck? Uh, this also ties in, if anyone else asks for, like, a custom card idea, I've shared this a few times before, um, but I really like equip spells, and I also like the living weapon mechanic in Magic the Gathering, so I think a bunch of equip spells that, like, there's some equip cards that, like, um, like, Premature Burial, that don't equip to a monster, you play them and then it brings out a monster to equip to. I like the idea of having equip spells that do that but make tokens, and you have like a single type of token, kind of like uh, with Generators or Brave Token. They all have the same consistent base stats, but each different weapon does a different thing, so I'd like to be that character. Uh, best Robot in Yu-Gi-Oh! Um, shoutouts to Orbital. Man, uh, Orbital puts up with so much garbage uh, from, from Kite, uh, and he just keeps trucking. Uh, I love that little robot, dude. Uh, big big ups to Orbital. Uh, JC Theater Yu-Gi-Oh! How do you prevent burnout? Keep consistent with your content creation. Um, gosh, for the burnout thing, um, if any of you know, uh, please let me know in the comments, because I, uh, I'm gonna be honest, I have trouble with this myself. Um, uh, initially I thought that when my schedule opened up, I would, um, uh, I'd be able to take, like, days off, but ever since I did this full-time and increased my video production, I'm just, like, I'm just spending all my time making stuff. Um, my idea is that once I get caught up enough, I can take, like, an off day, so I'm hoping that if I work hard enough, I'll be able to find time to, uh, prevent that burnout, but I know that's definitely completely unhealthy, so don't take that advice. Um, to keep with the, with the content creation, that was actually one of my biggest hurdles starting out. Um, uh, I am terrible at keeping to, like, habits or something. Um, like, I just don't do it, uh, unless it's something, like, deeply rooted. Like, I'll eat the same food over and over again for, like, months, uh, for, like, a meal, and I won't care. Um, but if I try to, like, pick up a new habit, I have to, like, hammer it in. Um, so when, like, 2019 started up, and I started doing, um, like, a video every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday when Magical Hero came out, that was kind of, like, my, I'm forcing myself to make a video between these times. It doesn't matter how good it is, it doesn't matter how long it is, I just promised myself that I would put out content at that time, and then it eventually, like, molded into the schedules, uh, that I was doing for the past couple of years, because I kind of had, like, set my expectation, and then that effectively set an audience expectation, and YouTube also loves consistency, so all three of those elements kind of came together to help, um, keep me, consi keep consistency going, because it was a schedule that I had ingrained enough in my brain to, like, be all like, okay, I gotta, I gotta focus on this and not just pick up, um, Legend of the Dragoon for, like, the eighth time. Uh, Kale Dragon asked, what are the three P's of life insurance on a fixed budget? Um, planning, preparation, and having regular poops. Um, if this is a reference to something, I, it is going right over my head. Uh, the Haver Card Man asked, what's your favorite type of content to make? Uh, I'm gonna be completely honest, it's the lore stuff. Um, if you've seen a few of them, you know that I don't hold specifically to, like, the canon that's established. Um, especially with the dual terminal stuff. I add my own little flair that I think helps fill in the gaps, uh, in a more interesting, fun way. Um, so that's definitely the most fun. Um, because I get to flex my creative muscles. Cloudy and Turbulence Yu-Gi-Oh! asked, favorite structure decks? Um... Favorite structure decks? I think the Light Sworn one was probably one of my favorites, uh, because I always had, like, a fascination with playing, like, Light Sworns and Mill decks since, like, high school, because those were, like, the big things. So having a way to accessibly get a lot of Light Sworn cards, plus, like, Raiden was ridiculous. Genesis Yu-Gi-Oh! asked, if you had to pick any card to ban or limit in the game, which one would it be? I'm not gonna lie and say that I have a hot take for this one. It's incredibly boilerplate. Please get rid of Mystic Mine. I don't think I've ever seen a game where that was played that I enjoyed or liked watching. It's a way for someone to win, and I'm sure some people like it. Without its existence, we wouldn't get the absolute angel that is Jeff Leonard, but I think it's done more bad for the game than it has good. Please get rid of that field spell. Rubelina asked, one underrated archetype and one overrated archetype. Um, figuring out an overrated archetype is kind of hard, because, like, all of the ones that people hype up generally tend to be the ones that 
are good at the time and people hype them up afterwards. Um, but if I had to go with one of those decks that I just think get a bit too much credit, um, I'm gonna get a lot of shit from this from Tatsum, but it's Thunder Dragon. Like, look, it's it's Big Bungus the deck. You, you've got a big monster that punches big, it's got a little bit of interruption, but otherwise the deck is just like a bunch of big dragons that punch good and like did have a search lock that forced you to hard draw your answers to it. But like, otherwise it's just a uh, big dragon, but not Link. Um, there's like variants to it, I'm sure, that do a lot of other things, but um, I was asked about archetypes, not uh, full deck mixtures. Uh, underrated? Y'all are sleeping on Medolce's, okay? Medolce has non-targeting removal, every hand is a starter, uh, they've got multiple normal summons now, they've got access to Promenade, which is like a hilariously powerful negate. Uh, it's, it's incredible. Play more Medolce's, folks. Artist with a fro asks, story behind your profile picture? Also the name Golden Nova. I think a couple people asked this one. Um, so, as for the profile picture, um, that is just kind of like me. Um, if you've seen the stream, I usually keep my hair up, but my hair down also looks pretty nice. Um, it's largely, the clothing choices are largely based on Dart from Legend of the Dragoon, my absolute favorite video game, and if given the chance, I will gush about it forever. So that's why I look like that, and what I hope to look like someday. Uh, I need to get my hands on those costume pieces. Uh, as for the name, this is one of my favorite stories to tell. So, back in middle school, uh, I was something of a fan fiction writer. Uh, I won't tell you where you can find my work, because I'm pretty sure it's still out there, and I'm not going to tell you my handle, but I will give you a little hint. Uh, when it came to joining Gaia Online, I wanted to pick a username that was similar to what I had beforehand, but not like a copy, so I took the sections of that name, and it turned into what we now know nowadays. So it's Golden Nova, and in general spaces without the Yu-Gi-Oh stuff, 989. So, if you can find it, Go ahead and scour the internet for the information. Um, but if you find it, please, please don't, please don't tell anyone. It's, it's very embarrassing stuff. Uh, Tommy High Rise asks, "What card would you like to see retrained in the future?" Uh, oh gosh, I. Uh, okay, if there is a card that represented like the core of Yu-Gi-Oh that got completely disrespected, it's Spirit of the Pharaoh, and I really think that needs a retrain. Uh, if you haven't seen that card, look it up. It's an absolute travesty and completely unplayable, and the payoff is just so stupid. But it's Egyptian. It has a lot of, like, it involves, like, main deck monsters that can't be normal summoned or set, which is what, like, a lot of bosses were like back in the day. Um, and if you could retool that summon effect to be uh, more relevant monster types, I think you've got something going there. Uh, maybe make it tie into, like, the current zombie world storyline going on, I think you've got something going there. Delilah Unknown asks, where's your pants? I've been looking for ages. Uh, you're gonna want to check the couch cushions, uh, should be third from the left, but not fourth from the right. That's the one that leads to the portal to hell. Uh, you want to find the portal that leads to the ethereal snack aisle, uh, cause I was just looking for something to eat, and that's, I think, the last time I was wearing them. Uh, Zero Ricardo One asks, any plans for the future of the channel? Um... That's, um, honestly, I haven't really thought too much about it. There's, like, vague things I've been thinking of. Um, I want to... Currently, the thing that I want to do next requires me to commission an artist, but I need to find the one that, uh, has the style that I need for the card that I want. Uh, it involves stuff for the Novaverse storyline, um, and, like, there's an artist who I would have definitely, like, a million percent would have wanted to see do it, but they're not currently taking commissions, and I don't want to be, like, rude or mean or anything. Um, so I've got to find someone else who can do that, but I can't obviously say what it is, otherwise it's going to be complete spoilers. Um, uh, so figuring out more stuff to do with the storyline for the channel is definitely one. Um, for, like, different content, I think I'm doing mostly what I want to do now. The only adjustment I'd like to do would be more lore archetypes, um for things that already exist, uh, things like Six Samurai, um, but then like getting some voice acting done for it, because I think there's only so much I can do with the way um, uh, the dual terminal history is going, and people seem to really like the kind of prototype for the idea that I did in episode two, where uh, um, Gotham's and Thunderlord had like a back and forth there, um, but I want to find more people to voice it, um, because, you know, 
I can only do so much with just me uh, using real life voices and then trying to modulate those using an audio program. Uh, but on top of that, I need to make sure that the people doing it are like trained and sound good. Um, I don't just want to take random people because like uh, it's not like a fun project with my friends kind of deal. It's a putting a video up to be monetized type deal. So there's a lot of like gears I've got to put together, which I don't currently have the capacity capacity I don't currently have the capacity to do when I'm trying to get like a five-day video schedule done maybe I'll tone down my video schedule at some point uh, but right now I'm trying to see uh, just how much I can get away with at the moment uh, peacekeeper what is your favorite monster from each type in Yu-Gi-Oh oh gosh that is there's like 20 something in each one um, okay you know what I'm gonna pull up the list here and I'm just gonna rapid fire the first thing that comes to mind on each of them um, I said I'd answer these questions I didn't say I'd answer them well <laughs> Okay, rapid fire. Spellcaster. Um, I like uh, Knights and Sorcerer. They got a really cool aesthetic. Dragon. Um, I like Petite Dragon. Uh, they got they're a little noodle. I love them. Zombie. Um, go to heck, Eldritch. Um, but Unizombie. Those look like some pals I can pal around with. Warrior. Got to be Spiral Super Agent. That guy looks jacked, and I like him. Uh, Beast Warrior. Laquarie. When when no one else got me, I know Laquarie got me. Uh, Beast. Uh, that's gonna be. Uh, Melfi, Cat, um, they're very squishy, I want to pet them. Uh, Winged Beast, uh, gotta be Bestiari, when no one else got me, I know Bestiari got me. Uh, Fiend, uh, that's gotta be, uh, Graf, uh, they're a good dog, I love that dog. Fairy, um, uh, what's a good fairy? Um, Herald of the Orange Light, um, in gameplay, they're kind of a jerk, but they kind of seem like they'd be kind of cool floating around your house providing some nice lighting. Uh, Insect. Gotta be insect. Uh, gotta be insect knight. We can no longer ignore their battle prowess. Dinosaur. Uh, I hate all dinosaurs. All dinosaurs suck, and they should go away. Um, but in the interest of this video, um, it's gotta be soul eating over raptor. I just love their tats. Uh, reptiles. Uh, I like reptilian viper. They're just a tiny. They're just a tiny snack. They're a tiny. No, no. Actually, reverse that. Uh, Danger Suchinoku, they're my favorite reptile. They're just a tiny snack. I like them. Fish. Um, there's so many things that are fish in this game that I wouldn't remember are fish off the top of my head. I'm going to go with seven colored fish, though, because I just remember using them a lot as a kid, and they're just a decent uh, decent attacker. Uh, sea Serpent. Um, oh, God, what's a Sea Serpent? I think Malin Glacier's got to be my favorite. Um, just because it's just such a jerk and it doesn't care, it'll just hand loop and be like, I don't care. Up yours. Wait, you want to play Yu-Gi-Oh? I don't think so. Uh, Aqua. Uh, I'm thinking Aqua Spirit, another old mainstay that was just a free summon uh, and mess with people in the battle phase. Uh, Pyro. That type doesn't exist. But if it did exist, uh, I would say that it'd be Volcanic Rocket, I think it is. Uh, the normal summon that surges your Blaze Accelerators because uh, it's so darn good. Um, Thunder. Uh, Thunder is going to be the... Um, some some summer summoner. That's it. They're just they're just a chill guy, just having just soaking up some rays. I can I can dig that. Um, rock rock has got to be block dragon. My boy block dragon did nothing wrong. Bring him back. Just ban the ad emancipators. They abused him, and then I can play block dragon burning abyss again. Uh, plant uh, plant's got to be giga plant. Uh, I played a lot of plant in high school. Uh, Lone fire blossom titanial all great. Giga Plant's the one that's got a big chomper uh, and is ready to do some uh, ready to do some damage. Uh, Machine. Machina Fortress, baby. Machina's Let's Go. I keep saying I play a lot of different decks when I was in high school, but Machina was one of the one of the big ones. It was cheap, it was effective, it was hard to get over, it was outstanding. Psychic, uh, gotta be Mind Protector. Why is that? Because they're an emergency teleport, and emergency teleport needs to come to three. It's about time. Come on. Divine Beast, uh, Slifer, they're a cool dragon, they're my favorite color, what's not to like? Worm, um, Worm's gotta be, oh god, they're so, um, oh god, I don't think it's any of the Yang Zings, uh, I don't think it's any of the Tenyi, I don't think it's any of the true Dracos, um, what's a worm that I like? It's not the dual terminal worms, um, oh no, uh, Baxia, there's something about Baxia that I just really, their design I really, really, if I can make sure I'm remembering this correctly. Was that Baxia? Baxia. Brightness of the Yang Zing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's Baxia. Baxia looks incredibly pettable, and I'd want it to be my friend. Uh, and Cybers, um, Cybers, favorite Cybers is, um, 
Um, what's that new one? Flip Frozen? Frozen Flip? Yeah, Flip Frozen. That's an adorable little unit, and I want it as like a desktop icon. It's got to be Flip Frozen. Corbin, was it always the plan to go pro, or did you start as a hobbyist who got to the point of going pro? Uh, the idea was always to try and go pro with this. Um... I did a lot of this for fun whenever I was in middle and high school uh, because I guess I just usually had an affinity for like video production and like making stuff. Um, I grew up on a lot of like channel awesome videos um, and hopefully I've excised a lot of the very bad stuff that a lot of those creators had going on from my stuff, uh, but it still instilled in me like this uh, need to like tell stories and like also be informative if that makes sense I've definitely been doing more the latter than the former But that's why you see a lot of those storyline segments because I like telling those on top of the lore things too that that way I'm not quite as Silly and pretentious trying to build my own lore when I can just talk about someone else's um But like later in life um my, my partners Delilah and Sky really pushed for me to like not do all of the office jobs that we were all kind of circulating around. Um, well, office and customer service stuff, um, because it was like call center stuff too. Um, but, you know, I got the encouragement, they got me the equipment, uh, I got started up like three years ago with that vampire video, and then I just kind of forgot about it because the job really sucked, and it, it like drained all of my energy, and I didn't have like the the energy to keep going, and then I saw that it was actually gaining some traction, and then I got restarted here. Um, I think I've really gotten off topic with this question. The answer is the idea was that I wanted to go pro with this. That was kind of like the journey up till this point. Um, but yeah, this is kind of something that I've always wanted to do because I just do not jive with like work work. Um, I've been floating around jobs like every couple of years. I just can't stand it anymore. And like, I'll have everyone know that I'm an excellent person to have on a job site. I've never been written up for, like, anything, uh, and I always, like, left my own accord. I always left my... Uh, I, have, I either always did two weeks' notice, or one job I just walked out on because I just felt extremely disrespected, um, though I am not going to name any of them because I'm not hardcore enough to put my uh, life on the line disrespecting certain companies because I don't want to get hit by uh, weird legal stuff. Okami asks, Favorite Bujin monster? Yamato. They're, they're the headliner? No, I guess technically Susanoo because they're the bigger version of Yamato, and they punch big. So a Sus Susanoo, also because if I want to like make someone mad, I can call them Susan Uwu or Susan Owo, um, and it'll be uh, it'll it'll bring me great joy. Jinxay asks, what one card would you take off the FNL list, and what one card would you add to the FNL? Um, the uh, I, I believe I've already gone over Mystic Mine. And I, everyone knows that I want Emergency Teleport to just come right off the list. But, like, is there another card? Is there anything else? Oh, um, I think Elder Entity Norden, to be honest. Um, it's very strong, and I think it will affect the metagame if it comes back. Um, and I might be underselling its power level, but it's like a one-card extra deck monster, but specifically with instant fusion, and they already limited instant fusion, so I don't think you need to keep Norden on the ban list anymore. I think that can come off. Uh, Strix13 asks, favorite code talker, and when will you do that episode? Love your work, by the way. Thanks, Strix. I super appreciate it. Uh, my favorite code talker, uh, design-wise, it's gotta be the fire one. I think power code talker? Yeah, power code talker rocks the socks visual-wise, um, but like play-wise, you know, it's got to be access code talker. Like, who, who's going to beat that? It's so accessible. It's so powerful. But, like, aesthetics-wise, power code talker has, like, a claw arm and looks fantastic. Uh, as for when I'll do it, um, sometime in the future. Uh, I don't have it scheduled out, but if you become a member, you can see when I do when I set up my monthly schedule. But, but you know, that's just a, a, a strange little thing, if you want. Uh, Rex Raptar asks, thoughts on hosting a semi-annual tournament uh, where the winner decides one archetype for you to make a video on in the near future? Uh, in the near future? I'm not sure. Because, um, yeah, so the thing right now is that I am kind of pouring all of my time into making the five days a week content cycle that I'm trying to do right now. Uh, also, scheduling a tournament to do that... Um, feels very daunting, especially because the days I'd want to run them are the days that I'm, like, working on things. Uh, Saturday is, like, a personal day I take with my family to run thing, uh, to run some games with them, uh, and Sunday is where I generally record progression polls, uh, as well as some other work stuff, so, um, the thoughts, I think it's a fun, like, prize. Uh, it's certainly been done before. I think MBT has had some great success with that. 
Um, and I would want to run some kind of tournament at some point, but in the near future, I don't think I have the bandwidth to handle that right now. Even if I delegate it out, because I still have to, like, send, like, what I'd want to do through them, and if any issues come up, I ultimately have to try and solve those kind of things. So, near future, uh, unfortunately, I have to say don't count on it, but it is something that I want to do. This Banhammer asks, favorite conspiracy theory? I don't look into many of them, uh, like, off the clock or anything. Um, so I just know the things that I see uh, floating around, like, video essays that I watch. Um, the Flat Earth one is definitely the, uh, is definitely pretty wild, though. Um, and finding the myriad ways people try to, um, you know, make, make that theory more well-rounded. Uh, well, no, I guess a flat circle is still, like, round, uh, as opposed to a sphere. Um, never mind, this joke doesn't work. Uh, go, go to the next question. Favorite discourse? I don't think I like discourse very much. Um, I like seeing when people that I don't like get hit by bad stuff, and I get a bit of schadenfreude from that, but, uh, you know, participating in discourse? I, I got better stuff to do with my time. Muatron, what are you playing in the new meta? Uh, if I can afford it, I'd like to do all of the new, um, uh, PK Fire with Destroyer Phoenix Enforcer, because all that stuff is wild, but... Uh, if it's more budget, uh, I think I'd have to play Earth Machines, uh, because that deck is similarly heckin' wild, uh, and people like Peeps Yu-Gi-Oh! are doing some crazy stuff with it, and I, uh, I need other people to build my decks for me, because I cannot build a deck to save my life. Fallen of Fallen asks, favorite Albaz lore card? Um, I think I went over it in the video, but Dogmaticabra is definitely, like, my new favorite one. Um, it doesn't tell a lot by itself, but, like, the art is so good. It looks incredible. It's like a Renaissance painting, I swear. It's it's so good. If you haven't, find a way to print this. Get like a uh, get like a painting or something. Put it on your wall. Your guests will be impressed. A uh, Red Emperor asks, has any company emailed you for sponsorship? Uh, they have a few times. Um, I don't want to get into any of the specifics. Um, but suffice it to say, none of them I felt I could make an ad spot for. Uh, that would integrate well with how I present my videos normally. Um, they're like for some real life products that I couldn't show off very well because, you know, if you're looking at the screen right now, you're not seeing physical space. Um, however, that being said, if you are a company watching this for some reason uh, and you sell like TCG related things, um, you know, give me a call. And by call, I mean check the email on my Twitter or on my about section. Uh, I'd love to sponsor your gear. Soul Byleth Guy asks, best anime OP? Um, I am so biased on this, I'm not gonna pretend like I'm not. This is based on nothing but my own personal experiences, but it's Outlaw Star, baby. It rocks, it's kicking, it's popping. Go, when this is over, pop open a YouTube thing, go listen to the Outlaw Star OP, it slaps so hard. Uh, Draco Icefang, gotta ask, since I know you're a Legend of the Dragoon fan, aside from Dart, who is your favorite playable character in the game? Uh, my favorite playable character, aside from Dart, uh, has got to be Albert. Um, I just, I just like his candor. Um, the guy, the guy knows what he's doing, he's, he's, he's a man about town, um, there's, like, a lot of stories where, like, the noble character is, like, uh, they go out into the world and they do, like, all kinds of, like, asshole things. But, like, Albert's just, like, a generally nice dude who's, like, well-read and he knows how to read a room. And, like, as a kid who didn't know how to talk to girls, seeing Albert go around and, like, talk with, like, princesses who are, like, like, he barely knew and just immediately starting, like, a nice conversation with them without being, like, super creepy was, like, what the... How do you do that? How do you have this much confidence and, like, also no social, like, norms to not talk about your extensive book collection or something? Um, and, like, and, like, I don't pretend that Legend of the Dragoon is, like, a incredibly well-written story. It, probably in a better story, Albert would be kind of more of an ass based on his upbringing, but, like, I don't care. I just like that the characters are nice, and Albert's is pretty cool. So, uh, long-winded, uh, Albert's, Albert's my dude, and also, his combos are the most fun to use. Chillin' Five Feet Apart asks, here's a scenario. You've moved out of your parents' mansion. They're millionaires and decide to give you a million dollars. What do you spend it on? Extra things. You are also given a pretty chunky plane, but you cannot fly it. So what are you going to do? Um, okay, well, I've got a million dollars. Um, 
I am going to selfishly tuck away whatever I need to survive with myself and my loved ones for, I don't know, like five years maybe. Um, uh, and then like the rest of it, I guess I would try to find like ways to invest in like people who are close to me, like pay off debts and stuff. Um, there's like, at some point I'd give away what's left to charity, but I, I guess I'm just an asshole or something. I want to make sure that like people that I know are taken care of. Um, and then I'd spend the rest on therapy. I think that, I don't know if that speaks poorly of my character or anything. Um, but that's basically how I would do it for the plane. I guess I could sell the plane for like extra parts or something. I don't, I don't want to fly anywhere. It, it'll take longer, but I'd rather just drive wherever I want to go because, um, I don't, I'm terrified of heights. Um, so, or maybe we can donate the plane to like a charity that needs it. I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure none of my, uh, <laughs> none of my close relatives or friends need an airplane to do anything. <laughs> uh, Jay Blades asks, uh, favorite card that mostly sees play outside its archetype. Oh, that's a, that's a good one. Um, uh, oh, it's technically banned, but one that I did like was Gem Knight Seraphonite because it kicked butt in Medolce. It's, it's so good. Extra normal summon off of, uh, Brilliant Fusion, uh, please. And also an instant fusion target, uh, please. Uh, Terry's Bonkai asks, what is your top three favorite dishes to eat? Um, gosh, I'm so, I'm so bad with, like, actually making food. I'm such a fast food junkie. Um, but, like, I'll take pizza, um, uh, chicken fried rice, and, like, um, oh God, what's the third thing? I'm, I swear, like, given the right situation, I will always forget what food I like to eat most at any given time. Um, especially when it comes to finding food. What is it? Pizza, chicken fried rice, and, um, I guess, I guess dishes can be, like, anything. So, like, I haven't picked a dessert, so, like, cheesecake. So, those are my three. At the moment, those are my top three. Ask me in, like, another couple of months, and I'll have, like, three different answers. Uh, Crocodile64 asks, what is your favorite lore cycle? Um, I think my favorite lore cycle comes down to World Legacy, because I feel like it's the most comprehensive uh, of the ones we've seen so far, uh, with the dual terminal one being, like, a close second. Um... Uh, that one's technically longer and does have, like, a complete cycle from beginning to end, but there's so many, like, it, it spans, like, a decade at least, and there's so many, like, points that make things confusing. World Legacy is a bit more, comp like, compressed, so there's less time for that to happen, and while you need, like, supplemental material to understand stuff about, like, the world before World Legacy came about, there's, like, at least a card that hints that that exists. Um, like, for instance, uh, I believe... Uh, Ib is in the picture for uh, World World Legacy Memories or Mech Knight Memories, whatever that one is called. Uh, Ib is uh, or Lee, the, the fairy. Lee is there. It's just kind of hard to know that that's Lee because you hardly ever see Lee outside of being a fairy. So like, uh. But other than that, it's fairly like you can kind of get what's going on in the story just by looking at the artwork. So I think that makes for my favorite lore cycle. Uh, Muhammad asks two questions. Uh, first, do you think people expect too much of cover cards? Um, okay, here's the thing. So, like, Konami has recently raised the prices on cards, has continuously made it more difficult for players to get a hold of cards they need to play Yu-Gi-Oh! So, if I were to pull a cover card, I would want it to be fairly powerful and be used to trade for other cards that I might want, or that it be a powerful card in the deck I want to play. It kind of sucks if a cover card, uh, because especially because of power creep, it sucks that if a card, like, is the cover for a set, like, you want to be invested in it, but, like, it kind of sucks. It's like, oh, well, cool, I can't, I don't want to buy sealed, because I might get this, like, card that's really, like, front and center, but, like, it's not doing anything that I want to do. I'd rather just, if I want to do it, I'll buy the single, which, you know, is a whole buying sealed versus versus buying singles is its whole other can of worms. But I think people are in the right to expect cards in their packs to be good, especially if it's the cover card. Uh, thoughts on all summoning methods. Uh, fusion tends to be the most creative. Uh, Synchros tend to be the most powerful because they're the hardest to get out. Ixes are the most reliable. Um, pendulums uh, are the most uh, ridiculous. Uh, it's kind of like when you can pull it off, it feels like you're getting really good at a speedrun. Uh, and Links 
are kind of like the are even more reliable than Xyz, but like they push it over the edge to just being like, well, anyone can use these links, whereas Xyz feel at least a little more specific to the deck you're playing. Uh, John Michael Bushman asks, I plan to move out someday, and I want to know what you think should be the first thing I arrange at the new place I'll be moving to. What should it be? Food? Furniture? An emergency teleportation device to the orbital platform? Well, I'm gonna shy away from the last one, mostly because you don't need an expensive teleportation device to come visit the orbital platform. You just gotta follow the Discord link in the description. Then you'll be able to converse with everyone there. To physically go there, you would have to transform your body into an esoteric narrative version and I don't think there's a device alive right now that can do that while maintaining your physical body, so you'll just be shredded and transformed into a character in a story, uh, and it, that's just the whole thing. You don't want to do that. Story Nova has to experience that on the daily. You don't want to do with that. Just, like, make sure your food stocks are good first, I guess. You can figure out the rest of the stuff as long as you're able to feed yourself. Zach Wallen has a few questions. Do you think we'll get Entailment Heroes as an official archetype? Uh, I don't know what Entailment Heroes are, so I'll have to skip over that. Uh, do you think we'll get Main Deck Mask Heroes? I think it's inevitable that we'll get the Main Deck Mask Hero cards, and when we do, the format will shatter into a million pieces. Uh, and what do you think of the new support for Mako, Aoi, and Shark? Um, I, I do not know personally because I'm not familiar enough with their themes to, like, know what I'm talking about, but the new Karyushin Leviathan has a Gozen match for non-waters, and that's ridiculous. Uh, I hear the new, um, Link 3 for Marincesses are, uh, is actually, well, they're water, so it's not fire, but it's incredible. Um, and the Shark Xyz monsters, I don't know how powerful they are, but a lot of the new ones, like, let you skip the activation conditions for Rank Up Magic, the seventh one, a card I loved playing in Sylvans, so seeing seeing that it's letting you activate it outside of those conditions is awesome. The Analyst 00, thoughts on the new Pendulum support? Boy, that's going to date this episode. Um, I think uh, it's incredibly funny that you can Pendulum Summon a Ritual Monster without needing to actually Ritual Summon it. Um, that being said, I do not have the big brain enough to actually understand anything that goes on in a big combo Pendulum deck, so I don't have an opinion on it, uh, but seeing Ritual break rules is fun. MSLM Gamer asks, since you cover multiple archetypes, which one is your favorite? Oh god, this is so difficult. Like, um, okay, I go into a whole story about this in my 500 subscriber Q&A, so go check out that one, because I believe Madolce is still, like, the one that, um, I feel the most connected to. Uh, B, love those gladiator beasts, baby, punch, do things, blow up cards, negate cards, uh, choose who fights in battle, negate effects, ooh, yeah, fighting, love them. Dundee123 has a couple questions. Uh, one, what's your favorite method of special summoning monsters, and do you think you could do a video of your favorite custom card ideas? Um, so, number one, um, my favorite one, uh, my favorite one is Xyz. Uh, you got Dante, um, you got a whole big toolbox you can use, and when you have a deck with a bunch of the same level monsters, you got a nice bit of consistency going on there, so Xyz is my personal favorite. Um, as for the custom card video, I, d I do want to do that. Uh, if you are not part of the Orbital Platform Discord, we have a whole section of people making custom cards, and the absolute creativity in there is astounding. Uh, I love seeing people share their ideas, and it's kind of like a, a space to kind of try out, essentially, game design, um, where no one here is going to be a well, I hope no one here is going to be a jerk to you. I don't like people being jerks to people in the custom card section, by the way. If you're listening to this and you've thought about being mean to people in that section, don't do not do that. I will find you and there I will I will not like you. Um, but I would like to showcase those at some point. Um, I know that the Tuesday-Thursday slots that I've been releasing on have been either the Staples Explained shorts or me re-releasing the Heroes Explained episodes. Um... I want to also be able to use those slots for, like, other things. Um, the thing is, though, is that it's very easy to put together those re-releases uh, and shorts time-wise. Uh, getting together a video about grading or, like, reviewing custom cards would take a while. Um, so hopefully at some point I can, like... The, the pipe dream is that I can get, like, an editor at some point that can handle all of the... Um, the tedious editing part of my job so I can do more creative stuff like making fun... Um, videos like talking about custom card ideas. Um, so in the future, yes, that's what I want to do. 
Uh, foreseeable, foreseeable future, don't hold your breath, but know that it's something that I want to do. Uh, Captain Blitz has a few questions. How do you plan your work week now that YouTube is your job? Um, I kind of just do work whenever it comes up. Um, when one task is done, I do the next one. Um, I try to do them in like sequential order. Like uh, this week started with the Fleur explained. So uh, I had to like do script writing a couple of days and record that. Uh, but if I couldn't, for whatever reason, reach my recording place, which is different from where I do my editing, a uh, whole different building, um, then I would sit down and prep the uh, Heroes Explained re-releases. Um, and if I have any spare odd, uh, any spare uh, pieces for videos, I would sit down and edit those. Um, it's just kind of like I do them piecemeal as I can in the order they're supposed to show up. So it's less of a plan and more like, a, okay, what to do next? What to do next? What to do next? Uh, which number monster is your favorite? Ah, ugh. oh god, um, obligatory number sixty-nine joke here. Um, but aside from that, uh, oh, aside from that is number one hundred one, uh, honor arc, uh, and silent honor. Is, is it honor arc and then silent honor dark? Uh, wh whichever one it is, I don't want to look that up right now. Uh, number 101, uh, was a big favorite of mine back in Primal Origin days. Uh, and it's still kind of like the cool rank 4 that's removal thing that's been kind of like the gold standard for those ever since we started branching out into things like Castell and Tornado Dragon. Oh no, Tornado Dragon is my favorite worm monster. Oh crud, go, go, go back, rewatch that section and imagine I said Tornado Dragon instead. Have you considered the benefits of a rolling chair, like a like an office chair because um I have and they're wonderful. I like scooting around in them. Um I hope that answers your question. Red Emperor also asks, what is the most toxic thing you've seen playing Yu-Gi-Oh? Um oh gosh, I am so bad at remembering specific things. There might be something worse than this, but a little bit of Nova lore. Um back when I was Oh, gosh, it must have been like 2014, 2015. I, I distinctly remember it was sometime around Shadow Spectres. There was a new comic book shop that showed up near me, and it didn't have anything to do with Yu-Gi-Oh! It was all magic, so I volunteered to run it. Uh, I got my judge certification, and I ran it for a long time. I, I wouldn't say I did everything to build up the community there. Obviously, they handled word of mouth and the store had the play space and they advertised product and all of that. Um, but I, I don't think I had an insignificant uh, influence on the Yu-Gi-Oh community growing in that shop. Um, so I saw a lot of things. Um, and the one that sticks out in my mind is when, oh God, I think, I forget what set um, Evil Swarm Exciton Knight came out in. I think it was Pryo. Um, but the, the details aren't important. The important part is that there are some people, in general, this isn't a Yu-Gi-Oh thing, you can see this anywhere, that are, like, so, like, their morals are so rooted in, like, market forces that almost anything can be justifiable as long as you can put it in the context of, like, a market. So I knew a player who... You know, you and I would say that they scammed a kid out of an Exciton Knight they pulled. Um, uh, but they, like, when confronted with it, their the, the kid's mother came to me and was like, Hey, I was told this was an expensive card. This is what I saw the trade was. Um, can you please talk to this guy? Because this is crazy. And yeah, like, uh, when confronted, the guy was like, Oh, well, I don't see the issue here. Uh, I gave the kid some cards that he liked, and I got a card that I wanted. Really, everyone benefited. But, like... The cards were from an archetype that I don't even remember what it was, but this was like a 12 year old kid. Uh, they were liking things like Claudians and stuff. They didn't have a full grip on the full meta power of the game. And this guy did the whole, um, hey, you want to you want a blue eyes white dragon for your one hundred and fifty dollar card uh, kind of deal. Uh, and I I hate that. Uh, I did my best to try and stamp out that kind of stuff whenever I saw it. But um. I'll also try to, you know, if you if you go to a local game store and you have those kind of people there, uh, I get it can be difficult confronting people. I don't think I would have had the courage to do that if I didn't have the express authority of the guy who runs tournaments at the shop. Um, 
but like if you see that and you see a kid getting like scammed or anything, don't let any of them try to weasel out with any of those excuses of like, oh, well, they, we both got what we wanted. No, 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 no. No, you, you call it out. Even if you can't force them to undo that trade, even if you can't physically let the like get those cards back where they rightfully belong, shaming people is a very powerful tool um, and can be used in the wrong way ways a lot of the time, but people who scam kids out of expensive cards, they deserve it, so make sure that you spread the shame for them as much as you can, because um, otherwise they're not going to stop if they don't have any consequences. And yeah, that's about all I've got. Um, if you have any other questions, please feel free to leave them in the comments here. Um, I'll do my best to get back to them. I know I've done a terrible job of getting back to comments now, uh, but we have reached that point where the channel's gotten so big and I get so many responses on top of my increased output that it is difficult to get the comments. But do know that I read them all and I will try to respond to as many as I can when I can. And now, if you've watched this far, I'd like to ask you a question. Uh, what are some things you'd like to see happen on the channel in the future? Uh, I did see some things like uh, wanting to talk about custom cards. Uh, do you feel the same way? Uh, are there any other things that you'd like to see done? Um, is there anything I could do that would enhance the value of like the Patreon or the membership things? Uh, literally anything, I'm open to as many suggestions that I can feasibly do as possible. Um, but aside from that, thank you all so much for watching, and I'll catch you next time. Bye-bye.